This is the Will Clayton Church of Christ in Alba, Texas. This is Wednesday, our midweek Bible study, and this is the month of June, and we are now here in looking at chapter three, three, where he mentions June that the earth third, and everything therein shall be dissolved. I'm not talking about the preacher there on the thing, Brother Frizz, but I uh, hit the wrong button, but June 23rd, and we will have our minds and hearts focused on our lesson for the night, which we will encourage you uh, to participate in. And to be able to help us also to understand. And this is part three and the final part uh, concerning the message that we have been studying, which I know has been helpful to me. What does the Bible say hinders a person from spiritual understanding? What does the Bible say hinders a person from spiritual understanding? And we're going to pick right up where we left off going into a new uh, study. One of the deals is we want to look at is a desire for preeminence. Now, we talked about no fear of God, no study of God's word, leaning on your own understanding. Pride prevents an humble spirit from break, breathing in God's word. And now, a desire for preeminence. Uh, look at uh, the third epistle of John. And we're going to go to chapter 1, starting at verse number 9. The third epistle of John, chapter 1. And we're going to go to verse 9 and start out. And it reads as follows. I wrote unto the church, but Diotrephes, who loveth to have the preeminence among them, receiveth us not. Wherefore, if I come, I will remember his deeds, which he doeth, uh, prating against us with malicious words, and not content therewith. Neither doth he himself receive the brethren, and forbiddeth them that would, and casteth them out of the church. He says, Beloved, follow not that which is evil, but that which is good. He that do it good is of God, but he that do it evil had not seen God. Demetrius had good report of all men and of the truth itself, yea, and we also bear record, and you know that our record is true. I had many things to write, but I will not with ink and pen write unto thee. But I trust I shall shortly see thee, and we shall speak face to face. Peace be to thee. Our friends salute thee. Greet the friends by name. So now we're looking at what does the Bible say in as a person from spiritual understanding. You know, we have a lot of different things, brethren, we can talk about, and it's beautiful. But I'm, I'm focusing my mind, and I hope you will do the same. On what does the Bible say? Because you got a lot of people, they knock what you try to tell. So you just go to the Bible. See what the Bible says. And he says, well, we do that. Yeah, but I mean, see what the Bible says, why a thing exists. And so sometimes people say, you know, I have trouble understanding the Bible. Well, we've listed seven different areas which may be causing you trouble. So we're talking about a desire for preeminence. When one desires to have preeminence, and let's, let's look at, come somewhere, you know, it's pretty well, basically, I'm sure we know what preeminence means. I'm not going to tell you nothing that you don't know, but it may give a more deeper meaning to what John is saying. G for Greek, 5383. G for Greek, 5383. This particular uh, word, uh, Deals with to be fond of being first. That is ambitious of distinction. Love to have the preeminence. The word deals with a two part specific meaning. The person is fond of being first. Want to be first. It's not like somebody said, well, you know, I'll go out here and, you know, talk to the people and call them down. It's like, you know. Yeah, I'll go out here and talk to people. You know, uh, I can handle this. You know, let me go first. And ambitious of distinction. I want to be different than the rest of the group. I'm ambitious. I fight towards that. That's the description of diatrophies. This is what he struggled with. And so look at the results that it brings. I wrote it to the church. Third John 1 9. But the atrophies who love it to have the preeminence, so he loves it, among them, receive it does not. So what happens with a guy like this? 
he will not receive the word of God. John is an apostle. He is actually, as he's speaking, teaching New Testament. They left these letters knowing that the church would need them. But we don't know if they really knew in their heart that this information would be kept for thousands of years later. So when these men spoke, they sinned. They had debates they shouldn't have had between themselves as Paul and Silas argued a point. The point is when you look at Paul and, uh, forgive me, Paul and Barnabas arguing a point about who should go, uh, it became sharp. So they decided to split up. Now we look at that, if they didn't curse each other out, you know, or talk about each other's family, they simply had a dispute against taking Mark. So Paul takes Silas, it was suggested to him. Barnabas takes Mark, and they go and do the Lord's work. Both men are going to err in their walk separate from each other. Paul's going to shave his head and pull off some stuff, trying to commit a vow to help people think he doesn't teach against Moses, almost got himself killed. Barnabas gets pulled off in a dissimulation of fake love towards some Gentiles getting caught up with Peter's example. But the idea is that people will have sharp dissensions and go separate ways to do works for the Lord. They didn't go and get drunk in a club. They didn't go and become a Jew again uh, with the law. They didn't go and become a heathen with worshiping Bacchus or something. But sometimes men have an argument different than that. Well, they have an armor where they fall out with each other and no longer love each other. That's the type of thing that Diotrephes is doing. He is falling out with the apostles. He doesn't want to deal with them anymore. He wants to be first. It's not to say that he couldn't teach, but he wants to be first. So he looks at the apostles. They have, obviously, power he doesn't have because they have unlimited, I mean, limited, forgive me, but they're not restricted in any area. They speak in tongues, they can do miracles, they can raise the dead. Christ had unlimited power. Their power is limited, but it isn't restricted to one area. Well, doctor's fees at best would have been given a gift. Tongues speaking or something. Verse 10, well, for if I come, I will remember his deeds, which he do. You know, brethren, when you're studying the Bible, Let's make sure we put ourselves in a lesson to see is it encouragement to us, rebuke, uh, forewarning, because the Bible is a book of teaching. We may come wanting to hear something else, but believe me, the law doesn't involve it'll be what we need to hear. Whether it's just to say, hey, you're doing great, keep up the good work, or hey, you need to adjust a couple of things. Sometimes we have in our mind something deep needs to be exposed something that no other man knows but us it's, you know you're wasting time all the bible is deep and it's all too deep for, for us if it weren't for god so it said this is a practical lesson we want to beat this guy up i know a lot of diatrophies a lot i want to beat this guy up man i can insert a bunch of names there with facts with facts proof that the people are like that he says well for i come I will remember his deeds when you do it. So why doesn't John just come and say, hey, let's forget about that. I'm moving forward. I'm trying to change people's life. No, because Diotrephes needs to be rebuked. He needs to be reprimanded. He needs to be punished for the wickedness uh, that he has gotten himself involved with. And so, therefore, we need to make sure our minds are focused on this very thought that we don't fall into this category. He says... Prating against us. I want to look that word up. Prating. That we both can have a good understanding uh, of this particular word. Because words that, you know, maybe we may not use regularly, but we know what they mean, but don't use regularly. It's easy to forget the thrust of the meaning. So prating uh, deals with the number G for Greek, 5396. G for Greek. 
5, 3, 9, 6. Now, this is, this is what he does. To be a babbler or trifler, that is meditation, to berate idly. So, he just idly knocks the apostles. Like a lot, a lot of saints do this. I've seen it, man. I've seen it so much. Just idly. Now, I have to watch myself too. I always say, you know, do I even need to say something about this? I don't want to make no comment if it's not necessary. Just, just say something. Somebody may say, you know, man, I was reading, you know, one of the writings that Peter had sent us. I mean, like, yeah, well, you know. Yeah, you know, he a good dude. You know what I mean? We, we teach here too. We teach here too. You know? So it's just idle statement. Just for no reason. And it's against... The apostles. John's talking about the apostles. That's what he's dealing with. He's talking about the fact is that he and the apostles are the group that travels with him. Diotrephes doesn't like. He says malicious words. What does malicious words deal with? You know, like if I say, like, yeah, yeah, you know, we teach here too. He's not the only one teach. They may think they're the only one teach. Now, see, that's malice. Did the apostles say we don't want to teach truth? They're not the only ones. You have to understand, other men had heard the gospel, and they were students of the Old Testament. They might not have gotten a letter from Paul, but Timothy definitely was a sharp gospel preacher. Paul, when he met him, he wasn't no guy out there, no club, they Paul had to get him to repent. No, they knew. They said, man, you need, they didn't even know about Timothy. Man, you know about Timothy? You met Timothy? Mama, grandmama, helped him understand the word of God. Daddy, not no member, but the mom and the grandmama is, so you got other people who teach. Paul doesn't know Silas. Silas is, is, is a great man. They have to tell him about Silas. He takes their advice and, and, and works with him. He says, uh, with malicious words, and not content that way. Not only that, neither does he himself receive the brethren. So he's not happy with just talking about them. 3 John chapter 1, verse 10. He's not just happy. But that he does more. He himself doesn't receive the brethren. That means the other brethren. He got other brethren coming out, wanting to work and teach. No. And forbid it them that would. So now you got other people outside the church. He don't want to work with them. And we're not, not talking about nobody that's doing no online worship or no fusion like that, or calling their wife first lady, or calling himself dog. We're talking about good men of God who he don't want to work with because he's the problem. Then he says, uh, forbid them that would. So anybody in the congregation that would, he says he forbids them. No, you know, somebody said, well, let's invite Brother so-and-so. I heard he down the street working with that church in the house down there. He come in there. No, I don't think we need that. You know, okay. And cast them out of the church. So he forbids the people who want it. And then say, okay, if you don't like it, oh, no, hit the door. Go right now, you know. He says, beloved, follow not that which is evil. He doesn't, he doesn't say diatrophies, doesn't understand. Let's work for him. Let's pray for him. He says he's evil. Now, remember who the letter is to. The letter is to Gaius, the well-beloved. Now, guess what? Gaius don't know this about diatrophies. I thought we weren't supposed to talk about people. Why doesn't John wait till he gets to the city, pull Dr. Fees aside privately, and talk to them? No, that's your brethren teach that nonsense. That's because they're crooked, and they don't want to be called. They know their name is somewhere on the list to be called out next. So he writes a letter and tells Gaius plainly, don't fool with him. But that which is good. He that do it good is of God. He that do it evil has not seen God. He's talking about diatrophies and anyone like it. He says he's evil. He doesn't do that which is good. And he hasn't seen God. He's not talking no third party. He's talking about diatrophy. That's the subject of the letter at this point. Verse 12. Now he speaks well of another brother. Demetrius had good report of all men. And of the truth itself. So he has a good report of all men. They think well of him. When Jesus said, beware when men speak well of you, he doesn't mean that nobody. He doesn't say, not anybody say something good about you. You better beware. He says, when men speak well of you, he said, beware. Just be aware of it. He said, because they hated the prophets and they talked about them. So you're not going to have a long list of people talking about you. Not that a person 
should not be spoken well of. But it's going to be a smaller list that speaks well of you if you're righteous. That doesn't mean if there's a lot of people that love you, you're a crook. No. But when you go to the broad spectrum of reports about you randomly chosen, it's going to be more negative about you. Oh, something, something's not right. Jesus said, beware. So what if you investigate and go, but well, this is just a group they keep bumping into that speaks well of me. It's cool. He said, just beware of it. Be aware, you know, you know what they say, you know. Well, he, man, he, he never tell nobody nothing. He just let stuff go because he loved everybody. So, oh, that's a horrible report. No, no, that's not me. He said, that's not me. I do talk against wickedness. And so it says, uh, and of the truth self. So the truth reports that Demetrius is a good guy. Why? His lifestyle. The truth says, stay from getting high and drunk. I spoke well of Demetrius. Don't beat your wife if he's married. I spoke well of Demetrius. He says, yay, and we also have work. So John says, and we too. We know the guy. He's a good guy. And you know that our record is true. See, why does John say that? John is an apostle. Yes, he sinned. Yes, he had to pray. You better believe it. But the key is, is John has a reputation with Gaius. And you know we teach the truth. Brethren, your, your relationship with the brethren should be, you should be able to say, now, brother Ozan, you know I talk truth. And I should be able to go, amen. We got to watch this stuff about, man, not striving to be right. You know, some people don't want to be right because they're not right. They don't want to be right. And they live a ragged life. You know, you hardly even know they're a saint. And not that you walk around with a sign, but there ought to be something distinct about you, something, you know. And uh, either you invite somebody to church or you spoke out against some evil, something, you know. And so uh, he says, I have many things to write, but I will not with ink and pen write unto thee. But I trust I shall shortly see thee. And we shall speak face to face. Peace be to the uh, friends to do the greet the friends by name. So he says several things that distinctly separates John from the, a lot of brethren we know. When he come to town, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check him. You hear me say that a lot? I'm going to check him. I'm going to check. What does that mean check? I mean, okay, you, I'm going to tell you something right now. I'm going to check you. Stop you in your tracks. You've been talking about the apology. You've been giving the saints trouble. You don't want the brethren to come through here. What's wrong with you? So I say, well, who is he? He's not Jesus. He's a brother that's trying to rescue your soul. That's what he does. That's what he does. So we understand that. Now, another area to look at is Christ has the preeminence. This is the difference. The distinction is Christ has the preeminence. Look at Colossians chapter 1. Christ has the preeminence. Verse number 20. No, verse 12. Giving thanks unto the Father, Colossians 1 and 12, which had made us meet, which means acceptable, to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. The saints in light. The separated ones in light. There are some separated ones unto Moses that are in darkness. These are the saints that are in light. He says, who had delivered us from the power of darkness and had translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. The only way that can be done is that the kingdom is on the earth right now. So let's let you know the kingdom is on the earth at the time he writes it. Disproving the false doctrine of the Jehovah's Witnesses. In whom we have redemption through his blood, which would be his spirit. Every time you see the blood, it would be Christ's spirit, even the forgiveness of of sins until you see where Christ spilt his blood then you know okay yeah that was, that was when he died the other times it's talking about his spirit who is the image of the invisible God the first born of every creature Jesus is the first created of all creations who made him God he didn't make himself this is before he becomes a man then he says one of the things I want to point out Jesus Jesus tells the disciples, you are of the earth, earthy, and I am from above. How is that possible if he came out of Mary's stomach? Well, this is how it's possible. When Joseph is going to divorce his wife, 
because they are married. You see, he just hadn't had sex yet, like you're supposed to do. And uh, what he decides, I'm going to put her away privately. I'm not going to bring her before the elders in the church. I'm just going to put her away privately and leave it alone. She go get another man. Because she's had a child with a man and lied and told me she's a virgin. Not that Joseph is so holy, but he obviously discussed, are you a virgin? When you say, yeah, you shouldn't have no swole stomach unless you got some disease because he hasn't had sex with you yet. And so the idea, everybody don't want a virgin. But he wanted one. So she would have been wrong for lying. But she didn't. She was a true virgin. And so what happens is, is that the angel comes to him at night, the angel, in a dream, and tells him, Joseph, don't put the weight of woman, because the seed, the thing that is in her, he calls it a thing. You can call people a thing, a negative. The thing that is in her is of the Holy Ghost. Jesus comes out of heaven a fetus. Brethren. He doesn't come out of heaven the seed. He's a fetus. He's placed in her womb. That's why he's no more kin to Mary than he is to Joseph. He's not kin to her. He's placed in the womb. Somebody say, well, I thought all flesh is of the earth. I know, and that's wrong. It's not. God can make anything he wants from anywhere. He chose to make us from dirt. But Jesus is a full man. And his body decomposes like a man. But when he's placed inside of the womb, he is clear when he speaks of himself. Later as an adult, he says, I'm not from the earth. I'm from above. So if Jesus connected physically to Mary like that, that egg and all that, no, 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 no. He comes in as a fetus. He is a being set inside her stomach. That's why he says the thing is of the Holy Ghost. That's from the Holy Spirit. Fashioned and brought down. And then it began to grow like any other baby. That's why he can tell she's pregnant. He's he been put it in her. He and he came out and told her what was going to happen. And she comes and tells America, you have a child, you know. He, she said, I don't know no man. I remember no man. You know, and, you know, so the thought is, is that this is a miracle. Because virgins cannot have children without being impregnated. So now we have to understand and we, and we realize that, that to understand that it's not the seed going into the egg and the baby's born. No, 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 no. He uses the womb of Mary. He uses the womb. I think I said that wrong one day. I may have. I can't remember. If I ever did, it was wrong. But it's the fetus goes into the womb. And that child of the Holy Ghost. And now he's right when he says, I'm from above. My flesh came from above. It is of the earth. It's going to decompose, and then he's going to put me back in it, and then he's going to take it up, and he's going to get rid of it. It's not going to be thrown all over. It's just got rid of it. But in his flesh, somebody get excited about that. God made bread in heaven, came out of heaven, manna, and they could describe its taste, a light wafer with honey on it. That's what it tastes like. God can make honey in heaven. That's how you get the taste on it. The key is, is that God can do anything, but he made you and me from dirt. And the only way we get into a womb is from the seed of our father. And we need to understand that. And so, now we understand that part. So, he's the firstborn for by him were all things created that are in heaven, he says, and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether be they be thrones or dominions or principalities or power, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things and by him all things consist. How is he before all things? He's the first to rise from the dead. First Corinthians 15. He's the first to rise from the dead. Jesus, so Jesus is the first brought forth. Then he makes everything by God's power. And then he's the first to die, be buried, and rise from the dead. He has to be the first in all things. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the first born from the dead. That in all things he might have the preeminence. So in all things. So he being the first born. The first from the dead. Makes him the head of the church. That's why he sends the church down after he resurrects. Because he is the head of it. The Muslim community disrespects him. That would be a price to pay at the judgment. Damnation it will be. And many of those fake saints. 
disrespect him, and many saints in the church disrespect him, but he is who he is, and we thank God for him. Now, another point is a desire for glory. Look at John 7, 14. John 7, 14. Anybody have any questions coming? Please feel free to make them, and any time they prick your heart. John 7 and 14. Now, about the midst of the feast, Jesus went up into the temple and taught. And the Jews marveled, saying, How knoweth this man letters? Your Bible may say, learning, having never learned. What do they mean by that? How, how does he speak like one and know the learning of the Bible at this level, but he's never been taught? How do they know? They've known him since a boy. They know, man, we remember this guy. We know this guy. Good, man, this guy. Someone may have asked him. They may have asked the Pharisees, did he go to school with you guys? No. So they said, and they hear him speak, they go like, he talks like they talk, but they also said about him, but he teaches with authority, not like the Pharisees. When Jesus spoke, they would receive in that voice. Yeah, man, it's like you're saying that like he, he, you, you got to do it because he said, because he's the son of God. You got to do it. Jesus answered them and said, my doctrine is not mine. What is that the answer to? How do I know letters? I study the Bible. I study the Bible. I'm saying one more time. I study the Bible. That's how I know doctrine. Because it's God. All I do is study it. I believe it. And I teach it. I don't have to go to this school. No, so uh, He says... But his that sent me. If any man will do his will. Here's the formula. If any man will do his will. He shall know of the doctrine. Wow. Is that even real? Yeah. Whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. So why doesn't a person know the doctrine? Ask yourself. Why you, I got to say. Why would your brother lock the doors? You think they know the doctrine? Oh, brethren, please. You think that? They never knew it. They've always taught lousy, rotten lessons intermingled with truth and verity and righteousness. And that's why they make these types of errors. Guys were told before they even went and got a doctrine. Years ago. We don't wear those types. They went and got it anyway. Some smarter that came up and said, you know what? It's just a thing that helps me. Oh, man, sit down. They are, all the brothers that died, they already told you, you die in the judgment. Because it is a vaunting of the self. It's a desire for glory. If you ask the education community, why do they give out titles? They will gladly take a, they're not saying. It gives recognition and honor to the recipient. It gives recognition and honor to the school whereby he received it. That's why they don't give it to anybody. You act a fool in the school. You're the last thing. You better go buy yours on the internet. They don't want you associated with them. They don't want to know, nothing, have nothing to do with you. And so they know it gives glory. And they want you to receive that glory. Because they will tell you they earned it. And they deserve it. And they let you know we're a tough school. If you got a paper from us, you know what you're talking about. It's all about glory. And that's why the Bible says to the apostle who can raise the dead, you will not be known as anything other than brother. Isn't that amazing? Of course they call John Rabbi. John had to be taught too. I guarantee you one thing you won't find in the Bible, in the Old Testament, the term Rabbi given to some man. Now go look it up. You want to find Pharisees, Sadducees. See, these are terms that developed throughout the years. The 400 years God wasn't talking to them, that's when you start seeing stuff pop up like that. Sanhedrin court, no such thing for 400 years. See, when, when you don't tell people stuff and let them go, see, okay, you're so holy, prove it. They start making up stuff. That's just what happens, brother. Just what happens. And so he says, whether it be of God or whether I speak myself, he said, if you knew the doctrine, you would know what I'm saying. You would know. you Because you would be of God. He that speaketh of himself seeketh his own glory. Now see you now see you and I got a problem now. 
we got to wonder if a guy that calls himself doctor agrees with this. He got to because he's seeking his own glory. I remember Brother Freer said, how do you develop a doctor in the church of Christ? I laughed, I laughed so hard when he said, I said, preacher, you sharp. He said, well, what are the requirements? You have to have children, you have to be married. You know, it was, it was just comical because there's no such thing in the church. There's no such thing. If you got it from the school, keep it at the school. But don't call yourself a religious school because you make yourself a buffoon and a fool because you're teaching religion in a stupid, ignorant way. And those are the nicest words I can select. If you look up fool, look up fool. The, the ones that the word Jesus, Jesus taught people and Paul say thou fool, dumb, numbskull, buffoon. Those are the, accurate, the synonyms on religion. Not intelligence, they be smart as a whip on religion. Because you will know, this is not a, a title of humble, this is a title of haughtiness. To be an apostle doesn't make you humble, the word actually means messenger. A prophet just means you told. It doesn't give you credibility. It separates you from the others that God has approved you and allowed you to speak for you, but it doesn't make you special because the prophet sin. All men that serve God at some point will sin. By choice. And so that's that part. Now here's another area. Also in the book of John. Chapter 8 verse 43. Let's see what this says. John 8 43. Now Jesus is going to break it down. Now this is beautiful man. Why do you not understand my speech? Even because you cannot hear my word. Is it because their ears aren't working? No. Is it because they're mentally challenged. Well they don't have ears to hear. No. He says in verse 4-4, four, four, you are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth. So he didn't stand in the truth, which means truth at one time was in his possession. He didn't stay in it. God didn't create any evil angels. That group became evil. Because there is no truth in them, that's why. So if it's not in you, guess what happens? You can't stay in it. So you see these brothers talking about, you know, I have to leave out of it. I have to go to the denominational church, man, because it was just too much hypocrisy in the church. Right? You know one thing. You just said, so truth wasn't in you, huh, brother? Just being a truth wasn't in you, wasn't sister? You go, well, the truth is in me. You can't tell me, yeah, well, anybody, the Bible says that don't abide in the truth. Truth's not in you. And what do you mean if you don't speak to us anymore? Who are you? What are you doing for the church that requires us to speak to you or need you to even pray for us? What are you doing? See, it's how you walk contrary to the word. Oh, no, we, got, we, got, we got righteous saints praying for us. I just got a question when you were talking. I know you talk about the schools. Mm -hmm. like South Christian. And I heard about them, you know, when I used to go to church in uh, Cleveland. Mm -hmm. the Christian Academy, you know, one up there something. So those schools, they're saying they're Christian Church of Christ schools, are they not teaching from the Bible? No. I said that without reservation. Absolutely not. So they, they read from the book like uh -huh. the Baptists do, but they're not teaching from it, no. Oh, okay. No, so they say the Church of Christ, but they're not teaching from the Bible. They're reading from it, they're not teaching from it. They're reading the portions that will bring them lucrative benefits, finances, recognition. Oh, okay. Because they wouldn't be wearing the titles of doctor. No, they, they don't have a stuff class like to go through this. Well, you know, with the other subject, they just, like you're saying, they teach yeah. them wrong from it. Okay. Exactly. Well, yeah, God bless you. They have a curriculum. Mm -hmm. All of them. Southwestern Christian College, Pepperdine. TC, you used to be a church of Christ school back in the day. Mm -hmm. The big touches Christian University. So did Abilene. They're still trying to hold on, but it, it's not legitimate. Mm -hmm. It's not legitimate. Abilene. Uh, but before Brother uh, uh, Han died, he told me. Brother Han was a wonderful brother. He used to make all our tracks. Brother Han said, I told him 20 years ago, and that's when Stephen was about a year. Stephen was about eight months old. I would carry him to get tracks to Brother Han. I'd put the little baby thing out the car, and he'd, he'd lay there. And Brother Han said, that's your little boy. We'd talk. He said, yeah, I told him 20 years, because that's not 37 years ago, 38 years ago that they have been informed you guys go in the wrong direction. It's like, and we're going to do what we want to. That's fine. Hey, we love you, man. We're not going to work with you, though. 
do what you want. Don't mean that you're not going to affect nobody but your own soul salvation. That's the blessing we have in being in Christ. You only can send your, I love it, you can only send yourself to hell. Isn't that lovely? We're in a system where you can only send yourself to hell. Man, praise the Lord in heaven. That's wonderful. And so uh, he says, uh, he abode not true because there is no truth in it. When he speaketh the lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, you believe me not. Which of you convinceth me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do you not believe me? Now, if we say that to people that go like, oh, that's because you won't accept it. That's the same thing they told Jesus. That's the same thing they told Jesus. You, you, you just, you, you're not with us. That's what he means by when he says, who shall I liken you unto? You're like children in the marketplace. John came. And he brought you a sad song. You kept wanting to dance and, and be happy. But you're on your way to hell. I come and bring you a happy song. And I'm the answer. And you want to cry. And get in an argument with me. So that's what he says. They're telling Jesus the same thing they tell you. If we tell you, you're not going to believe it. You know, you, they, they, have you ever told somebody. You're not doing what's right. And they tell you. You're not doing what's right. He's like a child. You ever talk to an adult. A grown adult. And how do you feel about that? You say like, you know, you're not doing what's right. You're not doing what's right either. He said, are we sixth graders again? That's not a reply unless you got facts. I'll give you an example. Elijah tells, no, Ahab tells Elijah, are thou the one that troubles Israel? Elijah said, no, you the one troubling Israel. Now, is it time for Ahab to go, we're not sixth graders, no, because you little devil, you and Jezebel, you are troubling Israel. If he got fact, he can come back with this thing. They don't know fact, a sixth grade child again. Because it's just tick for tack. You call me ugly, I'll call you ugly. You know, just tick for tack. And we can't live like that, brethren. He says, uh, and if I say the truth, why do you not believe me? He that is of God, hear it God's words. You therefore hear them not, because you are not of God. Now, you know, brethren, Brethren, do you, do you really believe this is what Jesus is saying? Jesus said, if they receive you, they will receive me. If they reject you, they will reject me. Because he knows I'm going to be gone, man. I'm not going to be here forever. Then answered the Jews and said, look at this sixth grade reply. Say we not well that thou art a Samaritan and hast a devil? That's how people do you. You say, you know, man, you got to change. You got a devil. Isn't that sixth grade childlike? Verse 49. Not to knock sixth graders, I'm just saying. Jesus answered, I have not a devil, but I honor my father, and you do dishonor me. And I seek not mine own glory. There's one that seek it and judge it. Truly, truly, I say unto you, if a man shall keep my sins, he shall never see death. Then said the Jews unto him, Now we know thou hast a devil. Look at these people. Now, not, I'm going to share something with you about having a devil. They're saying to him, you're not foaming at the mouth. You're not cutting yourself with stones. You're not turning flips and body rolling. Or you're not howling. You're not jumping in water and fire. Another form of having a demon in you is to speak against God. So they're accusing him of speaking against God. Now one thing we need to understand about this is understanding when you speak against God, it's very possible that a familiar spirit has entered you. One you keep next to you. Let them tell you if you're nasty. And then one day they come on in the door. You left it crack. So they come. Ee! You ever let the door crack and somebody come in you didn't want. You know, oh, I should have closed that door. Ee! Hey, hey, what's up? You know, you know, why the boss? I don't know, man. You know, you didn't, you didn't want him coming out, but you let the door crack. And that's what happened. Because Jesus is doing nothing evil. But they're saying you have a demon because you're speaking against God. That's what they think. So when people say, man, you talk like a devil and you, they don't mean you're doing anything crazy or uh, pervert, like hurting people. It's just your speech is contrary to the text. And so he says here, he explains them, I, I, you dishonor me. He says, verse 51, you know, if a man hear me, he should never see death. Then says the Jews unto him, now we know that thou hast a devil. Third time that kids been having a devil. 
Abraham is dead. See, that just same thing you're teaching is false. And the prophets, and thou says, if a man keep my saying, he shall never taste of death. So they're saying, okay, now watch what, now listen. Boy, you know God is good, saints. I hope y'all know God is good tonight. I'm serious. I'm going to tell you something. It's a bomb on me and you. Now watch this. They know what he's speaking is from the Old Testament. Listen to the statement. Listen to the statement. They say that they check his age. Verse 52. Then said the Jews unto him, Now we know that thou hast the devil. Abraham is dead. Listen to this. And the prophets. And thou says, If a man keep my saints, he should never taste the death. What saints are giving them from the Old Testament? They know it's from the Old Testament. They're saying, what you saying to us, Abraham and the prophets are dead. They listen to what you're saying. They're telling him. That's why I call him a devil. They're telling him, we don't want to do what you're saying because it comes from you. We don't like you. We don't like you. Because you're always getting on us about stuff. But we know what you're saying from the Bible. But Abraham and them died. So, what you talking about that they hear you? You're not doing them but repeating Old Testament. And they died. Y'all got it. I hope y'all got it. Don't you know a man know you're repeating the word of God? Y'all didn't know that. Y'all didn't know they were lying to you. Auntie, Uncle Joe, and Grandma. They know they was lying to you, huh? They know they lying. They know that's not the Bible. They remember that. If they just read a little, they remember. He says... They said to him, Art thou greater than our father Abraham, which is dead, and the prophets are dead? Who makest thou thyself? Who makest thou thyself? He says, Jesus answered, If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my father that honor me, of whom you say that he is your God. See, he's talking to him now. He said, One, you say your God? Yeah, that's who gives me honor. Yet you have not known him. That's all they've been praying to is God going to church on Saturday, going to church on Sunday on, the, on Pentecost, going to church on the high Sabbath. That's all they've been praying. He said, you don't know him. He said, but I know him. And if I should say I know him not, I shall be a liar like unto you. Well, Jesus is hitting hard. But I know him and keep his saying. And your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. And he saw it and was glad. He really finna get him now. Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? Jesus said unto them, Truly, truly, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. See, you got to understand, Abraham saw visions. And Abraham saw the day. See, now, now if you try to hustle up and go find that in the text, you have to understand, everything is not written, rather. Well, find that in the Old Testament. You find a lot of stuff said in New Testament. You won't find no tell. God will have to show you no two page link. He says, got a scripture that links. You'll find it says somewhere else in the Old Testament. And somewhere else in the Old Testament. He didn't say it connects from the old to the new. No. Aaron teaching about weak need brothers. He says, then they took on stones and cast them. But Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. Is he scared? Is he sorry? No. What did Jesus say? I cannot die. I cannot die until it's the time. I got to die at the right time. I got to die in Jerusalem. Got to be the right time. He says, my time has not yet come. So we understand that. And we can relate to it. Finally, no thirst for righteousness. No thirst for righteousness. Matthew 5. That's the seventh reason why people cannot understand spirituality. All right, Brother William. Good evening, church. Yeah, uh, brother, uh, good message, uh, brother, preaching about Jesus, about spreading the gospel, and about others that, you know, didn't believe him. They knew it was the truth, but they didn't want to accept it because they were doing their own thing. Mm -hmm. So it tasted good to them. Yeah. But when it comes to us, you know, even Church of Christ, we get offended when people try to tell us the truth. Because sometimes yeah. the people in the Church of Christ have us don't know the truth. Yeah. But we say we Church of Christ. But, you know, it, 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 it goes by the fruit you bear, you know, when it comes to the church. But a lot of people don't know that we are in Church of Christ. Mm -hmm. You know, you got some people in Church of Christ that do act a complete fool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, but they know they're in Church of Christ. They, oh, Lord, I'm going to complete fool. I know I'm in Church of Christ, but we still act complete fools. Mm -hmm. But you have to understand that 
we as Christians, well, we say we're Christians. Some of us say we're Christians, but we're really not. Mm -hmm. You know, I might as well just tell it like it is. Amen. You know, because, you know, you got uh, Christians in the, in the world. So they're like, when I was, how can I say it? When I first got into the church, I knew people in the church. Well, actually, take that back. When I got in church the first time, well, I actually got in church back in the day, um, I didn't know some of the people that was in the church, I didn't know they was Church of Christ. Amen. But even though I was out in the world before, but they was already in the Church of Christ. Mm -hmm. And you had some that worked at strip clubs and stuff like that, and oh, clubs, oh. and, and uh, I didn't know that. Um, and I'm like, wow. I said, you go to, you go to Church of Christ? Yeah. I'm like, my mom, like, why is, why is he working? You know, I think he went to Fifth Ward Church of Christ. <laughs> I forgot the guy's name, but it's like, wow. I can't believe it. And then, mm -hmm. and then some people know you, Church of Christ. And, 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 and how can I say this? People, I, I, well, I had to get on a brother the other day about, about some things uh, that he was doing. And uh, he got kind of upset about it. Yeah. And I was telling him about the church, about, you know, the doors being closed. And uh, he said he's not, he wasn't going to church because he's working. Mm -hmm. So I asked him, I said, why are you not going to church if the church's door is open? You're not going to church. He said, you going to pay my bills? Yeah. I said, no, nah, I'm not going to pay your bills. I said, you, you should have common sense. You're forsaking the assembly of Christ. And he was trying to bring up all these different uh, uh, scenarios. Oh, well, if you see me on the highway, you're going to pass me up and all that. I'm like, dude, I said, what are you talking about? You don't make sense at all. And uh, he said, yeah, man, I got to pay my bills. And I said, that's between you and God. I said, you know that she's supposed to be in church. Amen. Amen. So you know that. I said, you missing church. But I say one day you'll find out by you miss by you not coming to worship and missing church. I said, I said, God can take that job from you. You ain't no job at all. Amen. You know, but you know, people do get offended that's in the church. I had had to get on people that, some people in the church. I had to get on them about some things. Amen. And they got offended, but they knew they knew they came back to me and, and, and they said, Man, bro, you know what you're right. Praise God. So that's you know, but when it comes to telling people the truth, they know they did wrong. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. They might not come to you then and then, mm -hmm. but sooner or later they'll come back to you. You know, right. say, Yeah, you know what, you're right. You know, I was out of error, you know, I need to kinda, you know, uh control myself in that different type of aspect. Mm. But when it comes to the Bible, you know, Jesus was trying to he already knew that that coming was coming mm -hmm. when he was actually going to have to go get, you know, uh, uh, crucified. Mm -hmm. He knew that day was coming. He knew he was going to have to go through pain. Mm -hmm. He knew that. And, I, and it's just like with the Christians. We know we're going to go through some difficulties yes. by us preaching the word. We know that. But some people in Church of Christ are weak, weak-minded mm -hmm. people. Because we don't spread the gospel like we should. Mm -hmm. We don't talk to people like we should. Mm -hmm. But then when it comes to that, we, we're scared to, to, how can I say, we fear, we let, how you say fear. Mm -hmm. We let fear take control of us and we don't, and we don't spread it. Mm -hmm. So how can we be church of Christ, come to church every Sunday or whatever, but we don't spread the gospel? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that, that goes to show you, like you said, fear. When you fear, you know, you're not going to get in. Yeah. Because all you do, every, every, you come to church, yeah, that's, a good, that's a good that you come to church, but where's your mind at when you do come? Mm -hmm. Are you really saving souls like, you, like you're supposed to be saving them? Mm -hmm. Talking to people about the church, giving them tracts. Amen. And we can't do that. Like they say, we're faking the fraud. What's that, fake? What's that old saying? Fake it till you make it, mm -hmm. but you might not make it. All right. well, God bless you. <laughs> love you, man. Thank you. God bless you. Beautiful. Thanks. God bless you. We thank Brother William for helping us with that because, you know, that's what dissimulation means. Let love be without dissimulation. Don't be fake about it. Let's read this verse here. Brother William put a cap on this for us and we ready to uh, finish it off. Look at, if you will, the fifth chapter of Matthew. Verse 6, he says, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Now what is our topic? We're dealing with the statement 
of what does the Bible say hinders a person from spiritual understanding? Look at John chapter 7. Jesus is going to prove it. And this, is, this will be our last verse before we close out. John 7 verse number 37. Jesus says the same thing again. This time letting people know that this is what you have to do. He says, John 7, 37, that in the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, if any man thirsts, let him come unto me and drink. Come unto me and drink. He says, he that believeth on me, as the scripture said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. So if you believe on Christ and you drink of the word, guess what? It flows out so you have spiritual understanding flowing out to help people around you. He says, but this make here of the Holy Spirit, which they believe on him, that they believe in him, should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given because that Jesus was not yet glorified. So we understand that and we embrace it in our heart to know this particular thought. And the Lord God Almighty will reward us. This is what we seek, spiritual understanding. When does it start, God bless y'all? When does it begin? You hear the gospel, Romans 10, 17. You believe it. By faith, the hearing comes of the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You decide you want to believe it. Jesus said that except the individual shall believe this word and is baptized. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. He that believes not shall be damned. You've got to believe it. Mark 16, 16. Individual has to at some point after having heard truth, repent. Jesus said Luke 13, 3 and 5, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. Jesus puts us all in the same category, no matter what the reason we died for. He also turns around and tells us we must confess. Acts chapter 8, the eunuch says, see his water, what the hit me? Philip said, if you believe it all your heart, you may. He says, I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he stops the chariot. He baptizes him. And now he's safe. We have to understand why is baptism so critical. Within baptism, you get the promise of the Holy Ghost. Acts chapter 2 and verse 37, they asked Peter and the others, men and brethren, what shall we do? Peter responds in verse 38, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ. Why? For the remission of sins. And you shall receive what? Remission of sins, he already said. And the Holy Ghost. So those two things you don't get outside of baptism. For the promise, this is the promise his father gave, is unto you and to your children and all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And many other words that he testified and encouraged them, saying, save yourself from this unto all generation, which is crooked generation. Then they they glad to receive his word, but baptized the same day. About 3,000 souls were added unto them. They continued steadfast in the apostles' doctrine of breaking of bread and in prayers. And the Lord added to the church daily, such as should be saved. That's a powerful statement. Don't forget the fellowship to walk in the light as Christ in the light. First John chapter 1. Don't worry about what you see your husband or your wife or your children, your mom and daddy, your cousin, your brother, the preacher. The leadership, worry about what you see Jesus doing, you shall fare well. We understand that baptism saves, 1 Peter 3, 21, the like figure winds that even baptism is also now saved us, not the putting away of the field of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who's gone into heaven, angels, authority, and powers being made subject unto you. Who baptizes you? First Corinthians 12, 13 says, but by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, the Holy Spirit. Well, the Jew or Gentiles, bond free, and have all been made to drink into one spirit. Jesus told us, be faithful unto death, Revelation 2.10. He speaks this to the church. He says, be faithful unto death because the devil should cast some in prison. You have tribulation 10 days. It's not literal because of the apostle summer. We know it's not literal. But it is a test. If you stay faithful to death, the Lord will bless you and you will be rescued. If you believe that, you can be baptized right now if you're here. Stay standing when we sit down. If you're listening to the message, there's a little V-shaped object to the right under the title. Touch that. It'll open up a list of numbers to call. We will surely guide you to who can baptize you, and you will be safe. You'll be able to worship. But if you're here and you're a member of church, you've gotten off track. Come now, but together we stand and sing heaven's invitation. Oh, do not let the world.